Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering built-in functions in Python, literals and types of literals in Python, and then I will explain internal types, other built-in types, and lambda function in Python. Guys, I have uploaded complete Python programming subject tutorials. I will provide link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain literals and types of literals. Any value which we give to variable is known as literal. Literals are classified into three types. They are numeric literals, string literals, and special literals. Numeric literals contains integer type, float type, and complex type. For example, a equal to 10, where 10 is integer value. Similarly, I written b equal to 10.5 and c equal to complex number, that is 1 plus 2j. Value which we give to variable is known as literal. Here I am giving value 10 to variable a and 10.5 to b and 1 plus 2j to c. We call this 10, 10.5 and 1 plus 2j as literals. Whenever you write print a, print b, print c, you will get output 10, 10.5 and 1 plus 2j. This is numeric literals. Next I will explain string literals. For example, here I written a equal to hello, where hello is string. And we need to represent string in either single quotations or double quotations. Here I written a equal to hello in double quotations. And whenever you write print a, you will get output that is hello. Next I will explain special literals. Special literals contains none type. For example, here I written a equal to none. None means nothing. If you don't want to write any value, then just write none. Whenever you write print a, you will get output nothing because none means nothing. So it will not display any value. Next I will explain built-in functions. There are so many built-in functions available in Python. I will explain some of the commonly used built-in functions. And the first one is input function. This example here I written a equal to int of input of enter number. After that I written print a. So whenever you run this line of code, you will get output enter number. And here I can enter any integer value. So whenever you enter here 10, you will get output 10. This is use of input function. By using input function, you can enter input after executing program. Next one is eval function. In previous example, I given type as int. So I can enter only integer value. Whereas in this example, I written eval. Where by using eval function, you can enter any value. For example, if you enter any integer value or string value or float value, it will accept. This is use of eval function. Next one is exec function. Where exec stands for execute. Inside execute function, I written a equal to 2 semicolon b equal to 3 semicolon print a plus b. I written entire code in single quotations. Whenever you run this line of code, you will get output 5. Next is x function, where hex stands for hexadecimal. By using this function, you can convert integer value to hexadecimal. For example, here I written x of 16. So whenever you run this line of code, it will convert this integer value 16 to hexadecimal value. So we will get output 0x10. And next one is id function. Id function is used to identify address. Here I written id of orange. Where orange is string, so you need to take orange in double quotations. So whenever you run this line of code, it will display address of this orange. So we will get output like 10021 2, This is address of orange. Next one is len function. Where len stands for length. If you want to find length, then you need to use length function. For example, here I written a equal to, inside normal brackets I written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, where this normal bracket represent tuple. And whenever you write print len of a, you will get output 7 because total there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Total there are 7 items in this tuple. So you will get output 7. This is use of length function. Next one is max function. Same example, here I written print max of a from this list of items it will display maximum number. Among these items, 7 is highest number. So, it will display 7. Next one is min function. Example here I written print min of a, where min stands for minimum. It will display smallest element. Among all these elements, one is smallest element. So, whenever you write print min of a, you will get output 1. And next one is power function. Here, inside power function, I written 3 comma 4. That means, I am calculating 3 to the power of 4. That is 3 into 3 into 3 into 3. That is 81. This is use of power function. Next one is print function. There is no need of discussing print function. And next one is REPR function. Where REPR stands for representation. Here I written REPR of hello. Where hello is thing, I written this hello in double quotations. This representation function will represent string in quotations. So, you will get output hello in quotations. 
and next one is range function if you want to print values in sequence then you need to use range function for example here i written for i in range where i is variable name in range where range is function inside range i am writing 1 comma 6 so whenever you write print i you will get output 1 2 3 4 5 next one is sorted function by using sorted function, you can arrange elements in alphabetical order. For example, here I written sorted of python. Whenever you write sorted of python, it will print python in alphabetical order. So, you will get output p, h, n, o, t, y. This is my output. Next one is sum function. Sum function is used to sum values. For example, here I written sum of 3, comma 4, comma 5 in square brackets with the square brackets represent list. Next I written comma 3. Whenever you run this code, you will get output. 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 3 that is 15. This is use of sum function. By using sum function you can sum values. And next one is type function. Type function is used to identify data type. For example here I written type of 10. Whenever you write here type of 10, 10 is integer value. So we will get output class int. And there are some other built in functions like int function, float function, string function, complex function, list function and tuple function. By using this function you can convert one data type value to other data type value. Next I will explain lambda function. We also call this lambda function as anonymous function. This is syntax. At first you need to write keyword that is lambda and write arguments colon expression. You can give multiple number of arguments but you can give only one expression. I will give one example. Here I took variable name as x. x equal to lambda. I am taking argument that is a. You can give any number of arguments. But here I took only one argument that is a. And you cannot give multiple expressions. You can give only single expression. So I am writing here a plus 10. Where a plus 10 is expression. Now I am writing here print x of 5. So whenever you run this code you will get output that is 5 plus 10 that is 15. So 15 is my output. This is use of lambda function. Next I will explain difference between C programming and Python. C was developed by Dennis Ritchie in the year 1972. Whereas Python was developed by Guido van Rassum in the year 1991. Python is object oriented programming language. Whereas C is not object oriented programming language. C is middle level language and whereas Python is high level language. C is faster because we use compiler and whereas python is slow because we use interpreter in c for each and every statement we need to use semicolon whereas in python for each and every statement there is no need of using semicolon and c support pointers python do not support pointers in c we need to declare data type of variable like int a equal to 10 but whereas in python there is no need of declaring data type just you can write a equal to 10 we need to save c file with dot c extension and whereas for python we need to save file by giving dot py extension this are differences between C and Python. Next I will explain internal types in Python. Internal types are classified into six types. They are traceback, slice, xrange, code, frame and ellipse. At first I will explain what is traceback. Traceback is nothing but error message. For example, here I written a equal to, I took list, list contains numbers 1, 2, 3. And here I am writing print a of 10. Whenever I write here a of 10, I should get output value which is present in index number 10. But here 1 is present in index 0, 2 in index number 1 and 3 in index number 2. There is no index number 10 here. Whenever you run this code, you will get output as traceback error message like index is out of range. This is meaning of traceback. Traceback is nothing but error message. Next I will explain slice object. For example, here I written a equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6. This one is present in index number 0, 2 in index number 1, 3 in index number 2, 4 in index number 3, 5 in index number 4 and, and 6 in index number 5. I am writing here x equal to, I am using a slice function, slice of, I want to print 2 comma 3. So 2 is present in index number 1. So starting you need to give here 1 comma and 3 is present in index number 2. But here you need to give index 3 because you need to add plus 1 for n index. So whenever you run this code you will get output 2 comma 3. And next one is x range. By using x range function we can create x range objects. But python 3 do not support x range function. In place of x range function we use range function. This is example. Here I took for x in range of 1 comma 6. Whenever you write here print x you will get output. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We use range function in order to loop values. X range function will display numbers only by looping. If you want to loop set of code specific number of times, then you can use range function. This code 
Just remember this definition. This code objects are nothing but they are executable piece of code that are byte compiled. We execute them by using either exec function or eval function. Next one is frame. This frame objects are used to represent stack frames in Python. And this frame objects contains information about Python interpreter. And last one is ellipses. Ellipses is same like past statement. We represent ellipses with three dots. If you don't want to write any statements, then you can use three dots. For example, I'm creating function. We'll create function by using keyword that is def and let function name be fun and give your column. And inside this, I took three dots. If you write three dots, that means you are not writing anything inside this function. Instead of leaving this function empty, I just took here three dots. Where these three dots represent ellipse. And whenever you call this function, you will get output nothing because three dots mean nothing. So it will not display anything. There are some other built-in types in Python. They are type. By using type, we can find data type. And next one is null object. When none is null object, it will display nothing. I already explained set. I already explained functions and I already explained methods. I will explain files and modules in unit two.